Let's sing this out. Higher than the mountains. And higher than the mountains that I face. Stronger than the power of the grave. Constant in the trial and the change. This one thing remains. Come on, let's sing that again higher. And it's higher than the mountains that I face. Stronger than the power of the grave. Constant in the trial and the change. This one thing remains. This one. This one thing remains. Never fails. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Oh, your love. Come on and on and on it goes. And on and on and on and on it goes How it overwhelms and satisfies my soul And I never ever have to be afraid This one thing remains This one thing remains Love. Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Oh, your love. Come on, in death and in life. In death, in life. I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love. My debt is paid. There's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love. Sing that again in death. In death, in life, I'm confident and covered by the power. Separate my heart from your great love. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. never gives up on us, never fails us. The scripture tells us in Ecclesiastes 3.11, he has made everything beautiful in its time. So if it's not beautiful, he's not done working yet. Whatever the circumstance, whatever you're going through, know that we serve a God and we know a God and a God that pursues us, that moves mountains. He's done it before, and he'll do it again. So I want us to sing this song out in faith, that he is faithful. Come on. around these walls 
Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness your faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never failed me yet I know the night won't last Your word will come to pass My heart will sing your praise again Jesus, you're still enough Keep me Within your love, oh, my heart will sing your praise again. Your promise still stands. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence, you've never failed. Your promise still stands, great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands, this is my confidence, you've never failed me. Never failed me yet. All right, come on, let's sing this out, guys. We've seen him move the mountains before. We know that he can do it again. He's faithful in his promises. He's making everything beautiful. I've seen you move. I've seen you move, you move the mountains, and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way, and I believe I'll see you do it again. I've seen you move, you move the mountains, and I believe I'll see Your promise still stands, 
Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never failed me yet Never failed me yet I won't forget You're my confidence in death and in life in death in life I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love my debt is paid there's nothing that can separate my heart from your great never fail us, Lord. You haven't done it yet. You won't start now. So Jesus, we just thank you that we can rely on your faithfulness, not our own. You are so faithful, so loving, so obedient that you would die on a cross for us. We know that you're risen you are still moving among us. So we welcome your presence here during this sermon, during this day, for every single family represented that is tuning in. I just pray that you would open our hearts, our ears, our souls to what you would speak to us today. So Father, we praise, we love, and we worship you the best that we know how. And we pray all these things in your mighty name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone said, amen. You guys enjoy the rest of the service. Akuo Church, I'm so excited to be back with you. Over the last few weeks, we have welcomed Pastor Zach Scoggins and our very own family ministry director, Alyssa Liao, to bring us the messages. And I just like to thank them. Just, just stop and, and thank them real quick. Well, first off, I'd love to thank them for being hot with us, right? The honest, open, and transparent communication of things that happen in their lives and how Jesus weaved his way through their lives was absolutely amazing. So you too, thank you so much for serving us so well in that capacity. We appreciate y'all so much. And, and for Zach, you know, we only see him every now and then, but Alyssa, we get to appreciate her every week. Now, this week we will continue on this series called Build on Belief. And in this series, we are figuring out what to do with our lives once we have started to believe in Jesus. We are asking the question, how do we build on our belief? And sometimes for us to build on our belief, we need help from someone to get us down and through a path. Sometimes we need someone to clear the path for us to be able to build our belief on Jesus. Now, if you remember my story and kind of coming along, I left TV after God gave me a word to quit my job. And once I finally quit, I bounced around a little bit, but I ended up as the producer of services at City Church downtown, which would eventually be called City Tribe. Now, while there, it was a huge transition for me to go from TV into the ministry and understand how these two different things work. Now, with that being said, I had some growing pains to grow through. It was tough for me sometimes. And during that time, I had a coworker that didn't really think very highly of the job that I was doing. So that coworker went to our boss, Pastor Doug Robbins, and let him know that I probably shouldn't be on the team in the position that I was in. And it was during that time that Doug let that person know that I wasn't going anywhere. And then Doug encouraged me to continue to do what I was doing. 
You see, Doug didn't look at my background from outside of the ministry as a shortcoming. He saw it as an advantage for us to do something very different. And with me in that position, we got to do all kinds of fun stuff there. Uh, during that time, while I was the producer at City Tribe, we saw God grow that church from a few hundred to more than 1,500 people showing up every single Sunday. From there, Doug continued to push me to grow. He encouraged me to get up on stage and preach. He encouraged me to go to seminary, and he encouraged me to listen to God as he was calling us to start a Kuo church. Now, since the start, Doug has been a great advocate, advocate for me and has always done his best to speak out on my behalf. Because of that, I have been able to build on my belief in ways that I never could have imagined. I never could have imagined being in the ministry to begin with, much less going out and planting a church of my own. To start this with you guys. Have you ever had anyone that advocated for you? Have you ever had a parent or family member that was always letting people know just how awesome you were? Or maybe you had a teacher that continuously believed in you and told others the same. Or maybe you have a friend or significant other that will regularly sing your praises to anyone that will listen. If you've had that, then you know exactly how that can feel. Sometimes seeing someone else believe in us can push us further than anything that we could like convince ourselves in our own brains. And today we're going to see just that as we study through the account of the early church as recorded by the disciple of Jesus and historian Luke. So if you're interested in following along with us today, we will be reading through Acts chapter 11. So if you remember last week, we talked about how Peter, a friend and apostle of Jesus, had a meal with the Gentile man Cornelius. Now, during Peter, Peter's time with Cornelius and the rest of the people that he invited to the party, friends, family, they were all there. Peter got to share the gospel, the good news of Jesus. But before he could like even finish his talk, the Holy Spirit started falling upon people and they started speaking in all kinds of different languages and they all started praising God. After that, Peter and the others that he traveled with took this group of new Jesus believers to get baptized. All those Gentiles got baptized. Now, this might not sound like a big deal, but it was actually a huge deal. The fact that Peter walked into that house to eat with people that were Gentiles was a legit scandal to his friends in Jerusalem. You see, the law of Moses forbode Jewish people from touching things that an unclean person had touched. And they also considered all non-Jewish people, also known as Gentiles, unclean. So the fact that Peter would subject himself to having dinner in this place with all these unclean people, surely he touched something they touched. Surely he ate something that was prepared by unclean hands. So that means by the standards of the law, Peter had made himself unclean. Now let's see how this plays out. Here is what Luke recorded. Soon the news reached the apostles and other believers in Judea that the Gentiles had received the word of God. But when Peter arrived back in Jerusalem, the Jewish believers criticized him. You entered the home of Gentiles and even ate with them, they said. Then Peter told them exactly what happened. So Peter's friends in Jerusalem were not happy about this. I mean, he's supposed to be the leader of this church, and he's out there making himself unclean? I mean, he could bring that lack of cleanliness back to all of them. He could spread all the cooties to all the people there. But that's just the first half of it. In addition to the spiritual betrayal that these people were feeling Peter committed, there's even more. Remember, the family that he went to go and eat with wasn't just any regular Gentile family. They were the family of a Roman centurion, someone that was a commander of at least 100 men in the Roman army. Those were the exact people that were in charge of oppressing and following through with the oppression of the Jewish people. These Gentiles Peter ate with were the ones that had taken over the lands of the Jewish people. These Gentiles Peter ate with were the ones that had killed people they knew. The Gentiles Peter ate with were more than just a group of people that weren't following the laws of Moses. 
They were the literal enemy. So you can see why Jesus' followers in Jerusalem were so upset. These people that Peter spent time with, they didn't deserve to have Peter tell them all about Jesus. And surely there is no way that when Peter did share the gospel with them, anything could happen. At least that's the way they saw it. That's why Peter had to explain to them what happened and exactly how it happened. Here's how Luke recorded Peter talking with the believers in Jerusalem. I was in the town of Joppa, he said, and while I was praying, I went into a trance and saw a vision. Something like a large sheet was let down by its four corners from the sky, and it came right down to me. When I looked inside the sheet, I saw all sorts of tame and wild animals, reptiles, and birds. And I heard a voice say, get up, Peter, kill and eat them. No, Lord, I replied, I've never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure or unclean. But the voice from heaven spoke again, do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. This happened three times before the sheet, and all it contained was pulled back up to heaven. Just then, three men who had been sent from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were staying. The Holy Spirit told me to go with them and not to worry that they were Gentiles. These six brothers here accompanied me, and we soon entered the home of the man who had sent for us. He told us how an angel had appeared to him in his home and had told him, send messengers to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He will tell you how you and everyone in your household can be saved. As I began to speak, Peter continued, the Holy Spirit fell on them just as he fell on us at the beginning. If this sounds familiar, it's because it is. It's almost a word-for-word -word copy of how Luke recorded this story in the last chapter. I mean, if I was writing a paper about this in my English class and did this, I would have so many points getting taken off, right? Because I just literally repeated myself from one paragraph to the next. But this is Luke. He should know better, right? Why would he just repeat himself a couple times? Well, I think the reason that he does this is because there's an extra emphasis placed on something when it is repeated. The reason that Luke needed to make sure that he got this in his recording twice is because it was such a foreign idea to the Jewish followers of Jesus during that time. And that's who it would be sent out to. Remember, these Gentiles were outside of the law and were direct enemies of the Jewish people. So they needed this idea to get repeated to them multiple times for them to understand this. They had been conditioned to the law for their entire lives. The only way they had learned how to interact with God was through the law, and the law was only given to the people of Israel. The Jewish people were the only ones that interacted like this. So the people that Luke's recordings were getting sent to would need a lot of reminders. I mean, I imagine it, it's like new technology. For people that only knew what a rotary phone was, if they picked up a smartphone today, they would be confused by it, right? They would need someone to walk them through what it is capable of a few times. Then they would need some time to get used to it, and this is basically what's happening with the Jewish believers. They need some repetition to wrap their head around the idea that the Holy Spirit could work within the Gentiles as well. So Peter is doing just that. Luke is doing just that as he's repeating himself. So let's take a look at how Peter continues to explain all of this to the Jewish believers. As I began to speak, Peter continued, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as he fell on us at the beginning. Then I thought of the Lord's words when he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And since God gave these Gentiles the same gift he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to stand in God's way? When the others heard this, they stopped objecting and began praising God. They said, we can see that God has also given the Gentiles the privilege of repenting of their sins and receiving eternal life. So Peter shows up to Jerusalem and chooses to advocate on behalf of the Gentiles. He shows the Jewish believers that this is the way. He's showing the people that the ways of the law are old covenant things. 
He's showing the people that the way to the Holy Spirit is through believing in Jesus and nothing else. This was absolutely groundbreaking for them. The Jewish people had never seen God working in this way, and they were learning to see that he could move in anyone at any time, so long as they believed in Jesus. Now, to add to this idea, this isn't the only time we see someone advocating for someone else in this chapter. In the second half of Acts 11, we see Luke showing us what was happening with the group of believers in the city of Antioch. The city was located in the nation of Syria and was one of the great crossroads of the world during that time. The reason it was one of the great crossroads was it was because it was a huge metropolitan area that served as a center of culture and trade for the entire world. Now what happened was that a few believers fled to Antioch after Stephen, a leader in Jerusalem, was killed by the leaders of the temple. When the believers got there, they started to share about Jesus with Jews and Gentiles alike. And Luke wrote that the power of God was with the people preaching, and a large number of Gentiles came to faith. So many people came to faith that the group of believers in Jerusalem heard about it, and they were like, we gotta go check that out. And they were like, Barnabas, go out there, go see what's going on. And Barnabas, who's called a good man that was full of the Spirit, he gets there. And then he's like, this is amazing, this is awesome. And he starts preaching along with the believers that were already there, and even more people join in their faith. However, as the numbers continue to grow, Barnabas knew that they would need some more help. And he knew exactly where he could turn to find that help. Let's look at Luke's account to see what Barnabas did. Then Barnabas went on to Tarsus to look for Saul. When he found him, he brought him back to Antioch. Both of them stayed there with the church for a full year, teaching large crowds of people. It was at Antioch that the believers were first called Christians. So Saul, who would later become Paul and write most of what we know as the New Testament, at that point, he was only known as a former Jewish zealot that had persecuted the believers of Jesus and then had a life change when he encountered Jesus himself. The people of Antioch probably had only heard of Saul through like the legend or the stories that they had heard about him. So Barnabas would need to advocate on behalf of Saul. He probably would have needed to explain all the great things the Holy Spirit had done in Saul's life to that point, which wasn't a problem because this actually wasn't the first time that Barnabas had to do this on Saul's behalf. Barnabas had to do this with the believers in Jerusalem shortly after Saul's conversion, shortly after he got knocked off, knocked down on the ground, and Jesus changed his life completely. So let's jump back to Acts 9 to see what happened there. Here's what Luke wrote. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to meet with the believers, but they all were afraid of him. They did not believe that he had truly become a believer. Then Barnabas brought him to the apostles and told them how Saul had seen the Lord on the way to Damascus and how the Lord had spoken to Saul. He also told them that Saul had preached boldly in the name of Jesus in Damascus. So Saul stayed with the apostles and went all around Jerusalem with them, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. Once again, Barnabas was there to help Saul out. Through the advocating of Barnabas, Saul was able to thrive. Saul was able to continue to build on his belief, and he went on to go spread the good news of Jesus to a countless amount of people. The world had more people to preach about Jesus because Barnabas advocated for Saul. The world had more people to preach about Jesus because Peter advocated for the Gentiles. Akuo, the same thing can happen today. There are people out there that could be called to go and change the world by sharing the good news of Jesus, but they just need an advocate. They need someone that is going to stick their neck out for them. You can be that person. You can be the one that the Holy Spirit works through to free up someone to make things better, to spread the news of Jesus. So this week, be on the lookout for that person or those people. Be praying to Jesus, asking the Holy Spirit to discern who those people are. Now, it might not be super easy, though, because there are groups that some believers might look at and say, there's no way 
that Jesus could work for them, work through them. Or at least there's no way that Jesus is currently working through them right now. And depending on where you stand on a variety of different spiritual, social, or political issues, you might look at a group of people who you consider to be on the opposite side of you in very different ways. So I want you to ask these questions to yourself. Who are the people that I see as my enemies? Why do I see them as enemies? Could the Holy Spirit change them? Am I willing to advocate for someone from that group? As bad and messed up and everything that goes along with them, am I willing to advocate on their behalf? Am I willing to pray for them? Am I willing to ask Jesus to do something good for them in their lives? So continue to ask yourself this week questions like this. And what I want you to do is find at least one person you see on the other side and start praying for them. I want you to start advocating for them. I want you to love them in that way. Do you think you can bring yourself to do that? I hope so, because we're all called to do just that. Remember, Jesus gave us two new commandments while he was here, to love each other, and then to love each other in the same way that he loved the disciples, which those are the ways that we should be loving each other. Those are the commandments, love and love. And when we do that, we will show love to Jesus. He explains this while he is having his final meal with his disciples. Here is what Jesus told them. If you love me, obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. So by loving Jesus, through loving him, we get access to another advocate, the Holy Spirit. The first advocate for us is Jesus. When we believe in him, our sins are forgiven. On the day that we stand before God the Father, all the ways that we have fallen short of the ways that he wanted us to live our life will be overshadowed by the sacrifice of the Son, Jesus. And the way that you receive that is by simply believing that Jesus was who he said he was and did what we read that he did. All you have to do is accept that all that stuff happened with Jesus. By doing that, you will get Jesus and the Holy Spirit as advocates on your behalf. So right now, if you're someone that doesn't have that and would like to receive that, I'd like to just walk you through a simple conversation with Jesus, which we would call a prayer. So if you want to do that, I, I, I want to help you with that. And to help you out in this moment, I'm also going to ask the whole Akuo community to be praying along with you during this time. Because here at Akuo Church, no one ever has to pray alone. You always have a community with you. So just pray something like this along with me if you want to enter into that relationship and you want to get Jesus and the Holy Spirit as an advocate in your life. Just pray something like this. Just say, Jesus, I believe. I believe in you and what you did here on this earth. Today, the best way I know how, I give you my life. Amen. Now let's keep our heads bowed and whether you've believed the last four seconds or the last four decades and you want to grow for, in advocating for others, I want you to pray something like this along with me. Just say, Jesus, thank you for everything. Thank you for all the ways that you've stepped up for me. Thank you for all the ways that you have advocated for me. Thank you for all the ways that you have loved me. Jesus, I ask you that as I go through my days, that you would show me who I need to be advocating for. I pray that you would just take away my pride, take away my frustration, take away my anger, and allow me to advocate for people that are on the opposite side of me. 
Jesus, help me help others build on their belief. Help me build on my belief. Jesus, just, I thank you for everything. And we pray all these things in your holy and awesome name, Jesus. Amen. All right, guys, there are a few things that I want to share with you before we leave here. The first thing I want to talk about are the dinners that we had just last week. Guys, they were so much fun. And we had people all around town meeting up with people in our community and in our Akuo community. And you also invited people from outside of the Akuo community to hang out as well. What was really interesting was as I talked to all of these leaders from all these dinners, it seemed like there were more people from outside of the Akuo community at these dinners than inside. And that's amazing and I love it. Now, to continue the fun that we had, we wanna tell you about a big dinner that we're gonna have coming up on July the 8th. We're gonna have a potluck here at the church. We're gonna be meeting up on July the 8th to celebrate our two-year anniversary, which is gonna happen just a couple of days after that. We'll be talking about it some more in the coming days, but for now, be ready for our potluck dinner happening on July the 8th at 6.30 p.m. Now, speaking of meals, we just had our Feed SA Collection Day, and I want to tell you that, as always, y'all crushed it. Your generosity never ceases to amaze me. We were able to get enough donations in monetary and uh, uh, cans and stuff to supply more than 12,220 meals to people that are hungry here in the San Antonio area. So thank you guys so much for doing an amazing job to link to the community. And, and you know what, at this point, I shouldn't be that surprised about your generosity because we see it happen all the time here at Akua Church. So for those of you that make a, a sacrifice to be generous here at Akua Church, I just wanna thank you right now. We can't do any of the things that we do without you guys. You are so much a part of what we do here as, as anybody else. So, so just thank you for that. Now, if you are interested in, in being sacrificially giving, we want you just to stop and talk to God and ask him what he wants you to give. Now, if you haven't heard from him or you aren't sure where to start, a good place to start is by tithing, uh, exercising that method of biblical generosity called tithing, which means giving a first root 10% offering to the storehouse, which is your local church. That could be where you start. Now, for, for some of you, sacrificial giving might not be a possibility for you right now. Things might be really tough for you and your family as inflation goes up, as gas prices goes up. It, it might be really hard for you right now. So if you need anything, allow us to be linked to you during your tough time. Uh, so please just reach out to us if, if you do need anything. If, or maybe if you know someone that needs some help, to do that, all you have to do is go to our website, akuo.church, and click on the Contact Us link. You can also send an email to us at help at akuo.church, or you can call or text us at 210-901-8785. Now, if you are willing to give here and able to give here at Akuo Church, the way you can do that is by going to our website, akuo.church. Now, when you get there, all you have to do is click on the giving link and follow all the instructions that you will see on the screen. We also have a text to give option. For that, all you have to do is text Akuo, A-K-O-U-O, and the dollar amount you wanna to give to the number 77977. Now, if you don't wanna give electronically, we also have our P.O. Box available if you would like to send your gift through a check. For that, all you have to do is mail it to Akuo at P.O. Box 100-125, San Antonio, Texas, 78201. All right, guys, that's all that I have for you today. I just want you to know that I love and appreciate all of you. Our team loves and appreciates all of you, and we will be praying for you all week long. So before we go, let me just pray over you one last time. So Jesus, I ask as, as all these people turn off their TVs, put away their phones, laptops, or tablets, I pray that you would be with them. I pray that you would be speaking to them, and I pray that you would be highlighting the people that, that, that they need to advocate for. I pray that you would soften their hearts, and I pray that you would give them the boldness to go and move in the way that you are moving them, Lord. We thank you for everything and we love you. And we pray all of these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. All right, that's all that we have for you this week. We'll see you next time.